Hello, everyone. I'm not turning on my camera. <laughs> I had a long morning this morning. Sitting outside a Yappy Credit Bank for an hour. And then sitting inside a Yappy Credit Bank for an hour and a half. And I still don't have a bank card. <laughs> Viva la Turquie! It's all right. They're really nice. If you ever go to the Belchor branch of Yappy Credit, everybody in there is super nice. No, I have to wait a week for mine. Uh, some people, eight of us, didn't get account set up. So I have the internet, though, so that's good. But I have to go back in one week to pick up my card. Eight people did not get their account set up for some reason. So I also was sitting next to Antonio, who was setting up his account there. All right, where are we at here? How long do we wait before we start? And I apologize. Okay. First, I'd like to give an apology for yesterday. My electricity got shut off at 20 minutes after 9 and didn't come back until, actually, just to answer your question, Pam, there was almost nobody there. But my internet didn't come back till 11.30, but I ran my 11 o'clock class through a student moderated through WhatsApp, so that went pretty well. She assigned the tasks and everything for them to do. All right, let me start this presentation. Yeah, this is the fun part right now. Um, let me begin. I titled it Building a Second Bridge uh, for a reason, because since I started working at the university, you know, I've watched programs change in the undergraduate program and in the preparatory program. And one of the things we're constantly trying to do is build a bridge between our prep program and our undergraduate program. And we've done this for years, trying to prepare the preparatory students for when they enter the undergraduate program, what it's going to be like for them. And then the undergraduate program tries to prepare our students for their faculty courses. And overall, I think we've done an excellent job at this, looking at the programs, looking at the quality of the students, how much they have improved coming from the preparatory program into the undergraduate program. And I can say this, even though we're offering an exemption exam for the English 101 students initially coming directly from prep, the ones we do get are really quite good. They've improved so much over the years. Now, purpose of this project here is for us to reflect, and it was wonderful to uh, sit through Richard's session there you know, about self-reflection, because this is the same thing, but it's different. And it's to reflect on our teaching styles. And at the end of this, I need your ideas and opinions about the data I'm going to show because this changed the way I approach my students. So first I'd like to do is give you a little bit of background about how this project began for me. You know, we were assigned these projects and I thought, okay, what am I gonna do? This is in first semester, I'm teaching English 101. And I thought, what's gonna happen? Well, it all started with two of my students. They were both males taking the English 101 writing class during the fall semester this is our semester at the university um didn't want to put their pictures up i do know who they are but i'll call one of them bob and i'll call the other one fa <laughs> and they're palindromes for names of course and i've changed their likenesses and names just to protect their identity now what happened is bob he came into my class and he was a translation and interpretation student and the other guy, F.A., he was a fine arts and design student. Both of them were in the same class. Now, Bob, being a translation student, his level of English was quite good. Talking to him, his English was good. He could speak really well. I was quite impressed by his level of English. F.A., on the other hand, uh, uh, fine arts students have a lower entrance level than translation students in terms of 
their English. So FA's level of English, it could be best described as below average, struggling to talk, thinking of phrasing, grammar errors, uh, pronunciation errors, all the stuff there. Now, we had a writing project coming up and it was the first in-class writing. If you're unfamiliar with English 101, we do our writings in class. And what had happened before the first writing, both Bob and Efe had not shown up and attended a class for three lessons prior. And if you've taught 101, in those three weeks prior, we do a lot of writing activities and we try to explain the structure of the writing they're going to do. We work on formatting their opinions, putting their ideas together to try to have a logical, cohesive form of writing that uses source material. But neither of them had showed up to class for three lessons. And the day of the writing, they showed up, both of them. And I sat them down. And because the whole class is asking questions, I could only spend individual time of about 15 minutes with each student trying to explain. You need a topic sentence. You need supporting details. You need a thesis statement. And they're going, uh-huh, uh-huh, like all students, just say yes. So after creating their first writing, the translation Bob, with the very good level of English, he scored 67. The second student, F.A., he scored 83, the one with the below level of English. And this surprised me because um, it's sort of a um, situational irony where I expected Bob to do better than F.A., and I was totally wrong. So being confused by this, I thought, okay, well, what happened here? You know, both of them attended about the same amount of time. One has an excellent English score lower than the other guy. So I thought, well, let me go have a look at their prep scores, okay? Because, you know, they come from different departments. Maybe the translation student barely scraped into the undergraduate program. So Bob had never attended the prep program. He came directly directly into the undergraduate program from high school. Whereas F.A., he had spent a full year in the prep program. So what this showed me is that F.A. was able to fall back on the teaching he had in the preparatory program, where Bob, not having attended prep, had no schema to fall back on for the first writing. So, had attending the prep program help one of them perform better than the other students who didn't attend the prep program? That was my thought. So, now I had to do a little more investigation. I have three classes. What about the rest of my students? And the reason I picked this is when a student comes from high school, the lycée programs are preparing them for a university entrance exam. And I talked to a lot of my students, how much writing did you learn in high school? And most of them said, not much. They were just trying to get us to pass the exam to get into university. So in my opinion, my thought at the time was, Bob, the translation student, when I was saying the words topic sentence, thesis statement, supporting details, Bob didn't have any idea what those meant. So when I said, you need to write a thesis statement here, you need these three topic sentences, Bob was clueless. Even though Bob said, yes, I understand you, he was not understanding me. Where F.A., who took the prep program, he had been taught all these phrases of writing. So when I quickly explained him what to do, he could connect it to his learning in prep. So what about the rest of my students? I decided to check them all. This is what I found out, three English 101 classes. My first class had 22 students. Eight of them had attended prep. 14 of them were in my class directly from high school. Class two, 22 students, 12 attended prep, 10 were exempt. 
and some of these came from different universities okay and I checked there because you can see their other universities they never took a prep program in their other university so they transferred from an undergraduate to an undergraduate my third class had 19 students 11 took prep eight didn't overall basically half of my students had not attended the prep program now at this time I went oh my god how much are they understanding of what I'm saying to them because I was aware we bridged that gap from the prep program and I think that's an extremely valuable thing we've done but unfortunately half of my students hadn't taken advantage of attending prep so was I teaching them correctly was I at the right level for half my students and I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe this is anom an anomaly. So I decided to go, okay, what other problems are they having? And um, did this affect them past attending their first year in the undergraduate? Um, so, you know, after they finished their first year in the undergraduate, were these problems carrying on into further years? So right now, I teach a lot of students from different years so I thought okay let me ask them how things went for them so I did a poll and I ended up with 61 responses similar amount of answers to my first three classes in the first semester these are my students this semester right now 39 percent their first year I have only a couple second years who failed and as you can see I have almost equal amount of third years and 26 percent of them are fourth year students so in this case I'm getting a wide variety of opinions okay and therefore I'm not just relying on first year students first question I asked them was did you attend the prep program because I have a wide variety and this is excluding the first statistics from English 101 this involves three classes of English 310 and two classes of a translation course. So did you attend the prep program before you became an undergraduate student? 54% never took prep. 46% did take prep. So this has not just been isolated this year. If I have that many third and fourth year students who also did a lot of responses to this, as you saw, a lot of them never took prep as well. So it turns out I am teaching a lot of things, uh, students who never walked across the bridge from prep into undergraduate. Second question I asked is, when you started the first year of university in the spring semester, did you find it difficult to adjust to a semester system where you take multiple different courses? This is one of the problems I have heard from students in the past because in high school, there is no semester system. And suddenly they're in the undergraduate program and now they have to balance attending five or six different courses on the same day. And if you have ever taught multiple different courses in one semester, it's kind of difficult to walk out of teaching something like English and walk into another classroom immediately and start teaching a different subject. It takes a little bit for your brain to switch between these two subjects, especially if your students are different years. Now, Canada had a similar pro problem. We, for years back in the past, we also did not have a semester system in our high schools. And our education system in Canada at the time thought that was a disadvantage for our students. So now in Canada, the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade of high school are taught in a semester format, semester system. So, and they thought that helps prepare students for their higher education learning. So out of this here, we have, um, 49%, almost half the students said they had a difficult time adjusting to the semester system. That's a lot. When you first started your university classes, did you have a problem with time management? Because suddenly they have to manage all these different assignments and courses. And apparently we have 41% said they had difficulty when they first started university. And 
whether or not we can connect this back to not attending prep is something just to consider that I've been thinking about. Next one here, have you uh, experienced a greater uh, should be difficulty with managing your time since you started taking your course online? So in this case, I decided to compare regular lessons when they first started with what's happening online to see if online teaching has caused a, a larger problem for them. Partially because they had, like us, they had to learn technology. Um, when they used to take some exams, they ended up being given a whole bunch more assignments to do, and suddenly their workload increased. Number nine, do you believe your instructors could do more to help you adjust to managing your course workload? 36% say yes. So question now is, okay, if our students are thinking we need to do more, what do we need to do? That's the big question. So I asked them to give me their opinions. So if they said yes to what we could do better to adjust their course workload, they wrote responses for me. And what I want to show you now is how the students are thinking about this problem. Okay, what can we do better for them from a student perspective? I had a lot of answers, I had to just pick some. So first student here said, first of all, I had a very difficult time to adapt the school grammar. It's not great. My first year, I had no idea about the classes. This is a student, I actually showed this and I know the student who wrote this. She did not take the preparatory program. That is to say, I believe that if there were seminars about the contents of the classes, it would be helpful. Now I read that and I thought, okay, we do an introduction lesson and we explain to them what we're going to be teaching them. Is that enough information for them? The student says, on the other hand, to adjust to the course overload, our instructors can give more time and more insight to us to prepare our projects and presentations. Some of my instructors were more understanding and flexible, while some of my instructors were very strict and distant. When we look at my transcript, we definitely see that at my first year in school, I just passed the classes that have more understanding instructors. Friendly instructors definitely made me more successful at class. You could be Richard, I'm not sure. This is why we're gonna have a chat after. Second student, for some courses, instructors started to give extreme amounts of workload, which is not fair at all. I believe decreasing the workload a little will be so much better for the students. As I said, it's the case for only some courses. At least they're being realistic. Simply saying, you will get used to it, or we were having the same difficulties now. It is your turn, <laughs> really. It seems that they're using students to take revenge on their past instructors. They could just tell us what they expect for each class and how to prepare for it. So this is reiterating what the first student said. And I can't imagine any of us actually saying to our students, hey, I have the same problems in university as you, now it's your turn. To me, that's rude, but apparently it gets said. They can give information about time management at the beginning of our course, what to do and how to do our homework, et cetera. Interesting thought. When I was preparing for university exam last year, my school was treating us like racehorses and it's the same here. Things got harder each week. When I thought I could relax a little, the workload got tougher. It's as if teachers are trying to see who will survive and who won't. Are we playing natural selection here? Yeah, teachers are busy too. I like this, a little bit of empathy. They give courses, read all those assignments, go to meetings, have their personal issues, etc but they still think our only job is to do assignments and they don't understand why it is so hard. I know it's not possible to contact every student who aren't doing great in the course, so instead of jumping into conclusions, teachers can consider other possibilities. If I'm not active or responsive during the course, it doesn't automatically mean I'm not there or I'm on my phone ignoring you. Maybe I had a fight with my parents and I'm upset. I think this is about uh, online courses. Maybe I'm crying. How would you know? It's easy to make assumptions and move on. So for me, uh, learning all of this and reflecting on my own teaching style, I realized that I should be a little bit more empathetic. 
and understanding towards my students, towards their lives, their problems. And I also need to be more understanding that some of them who are going through these issues were not prepared in a preparatory program. You know, they're still young, uh, coming directly from high school to university causes more problems than just learning. It causes emotional problems. So, my dear esteemed colleagues, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Now, I don't know if we have anybody from the prep program here, because I really wish we did. Um, not many. Because I'd like to know what happens in the preparatory program. They are aware, Greg, Pam, I'd love to hear from you. Because the, the instructors in the prep program, they know that their students are coming from high school. But for us undergraduate instructors, we didn't know, or I didn't know, I had so many of them. So what can we do? So you can turn on the microphone if you want to talk, because sometimes it takes a lot to write in the chat boxes and there's not a lot of people here. So yeah, I like that from the, we have to be really good listeners. And we have to make ourselves open uh, and receptive to listening to what our students have to say. Uh, Pam, would you possibly be able to explain if is there a difference in prep for how you approach them? I mean, I think automatically there's a difference because I mean we perceive them as just coming out of high school. We know they've just come from high school, um, and a, a lot of the uh, even the, the kind of English, the general English, a lot of the, the textbooks and things are more geared to younger um, general learners rather than academic learners. So. In that sense, it's kind of geared up for welcoming them. Welcoming them. Um, I mean, I think the prep's a very great program. I think it deals with these things very, very well. But then this step into actual faculty and being a, a I don't mean a real student, but if you know what I mean, they're, they're dealing with their department. Um, I mean, it's a lot for them to take on, to walk into university one day um, and use a foreign language without having had that preparatory training type thing um, and so I think we I think that you've made a very good point I think there are a lot more students now that haven't done the prep program and I think we tend to assume that they have done the prep program and we need to um, maybe think about that when we're planning the curriculum planning um, the first few lessons with the groups and just appreciate that they've not come from our prep program um, so I think it's a very good issue that you've raised, and I think we do need to do some more work on it. Great, thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, looking at my initial approach to these students when they come into the undergraduate program, like Pam, you hit on the one point. We immediately think either they came from the PEP program or, or they are prepared for everything we're going to start throwing at them and all the information we're going to give to them. It's a tough thing, and I like your comment, Anita. You know, the journal writing is a very good thing if we could get them to do it. But some, I'm not sure if they would trust us right away coming directly into um, the undergraduate program for high school. It must be extremely intimidating. They're with a bunch of strangers. You know, prep students, they make friends in the prep program. And then when they hit, they still have these friends, they try to get the classes together in the undergraduate, so they have their own support friend group. But the ones coming from high school, they don't have any friends. So it must be really a scary situation for them. That was exactly the point I was going to raise, Arthur. I mean, they, they have made friends, they've got connections through the prep school. As you say, they've tried to choose the classes together. Um, so they have support that these other kids might not have. Um, and they're going, they've just left home. So there's a lot of emotional baggage that they have to deal with that the prep students have already dealt with kind of thing. So I think it's a very important thing to realize. Yeah, I completely agree. This has changed after seeing how many of them. I had to rethink everything because I figured this out in the first semester and I tried to do a better job in the second semester. So anybody else? And yeah, thanks Richard. And I like all your ideas and I agree with them. In the past, far more of them were attending prep, but with all the universities closing here 
and everything, all the change that's happened in the education system, I think our student profile has changed as well. And I kind of noticed this. If I give you a short story, I was teaching a class. Um, I was an English 101 class a few years back. And there was a fine arts girl. I think she was architecture. And at the start of the year, she looked really nice. She had her makeup on. Her hair was done. Her clothes were ironed. By about week five, she looked like a drug addict. Big dark circles under her eyes. Hair was messy. Clothes were wrinkled. She was like obviously clearly struggling with the heavy workload and program. She had no idea uh, what to do. And I think also the time working on them with their time management is also something we might want to consider. You know, but like I say, this is just about self-reflection. Are we considering the needs of our students properly, knowing where they come from now and how we can improve and address how we teach? And um, anybody else want to say anything? I'm kind of over the time limit here. Any yet? Yeah, Richard, love to hear from you. Uh, I'll oh, put my mic down. Hello. I just wondered, uh, did you have a look at if there was any correlation then across all your classes between the uh, not attending prep and scoring lower in that first writing, or maybe scoring lower overall? No, at the time I didn't divide them up and go back and look at all their scores. I only picked a high one and a low one. The interesting thing I did find was I did have some students who came from high school. And I, I went around and I talked to a lot of them. I just sat down beside them and had a chat. For example, in the same class as these two boys, I had one boy who did not attend prep and his writing was excellent. So I walked up to him and I sat down and I said, hey, you know, you didn't take a prep program. Did your high school teacher teach you how to write this well and he said no I attended three different English language schools during the summer in Izmir and they taught me how to write so I thought that was very interesting as well but anyways I guess we should wrap up just food for thought for later so I'd just like to say thank you everyone for the time you've given me and take care and I think I'll try that journal thing Anita I like that idea. Bye, everyone. Take care.